special thank you to our sponsors of Brush Reels Live, Too Long Realty Group, the Alzheimer's Association, and Keith Media and Coaching. For more information on Too Long Realty Group and their realty services, go to TooLongRealty.com. And for more information on the Alzheimer's Association and how to get to this amazing organization searching for a cure for Alzheimer's, go to ALZ.org. A special thank you to Steve Smith. And finally, for more information on Keys Media and Coaching and Consulting, go to keysmedia.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Marketing. Oh, <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. Welcome to Russ Reels Live, everybody. I just recorded an episode of Marketing with Russ. There we go. But we are on Russ Reels Live here at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for your listening and viewing pleasure. We're here every Thursday. And I'm telling you, you know what? That is only the first time I've ever said the wrong show on the show, but it's bound to happen, right? There you go. We have fun and it is live and we're so thankful that you're here today on Russ Reels Live. So thank you so much for being here. It's been a crazy fun day today. Lots going on. I don't know about you, but boy, I tell you, it's been a little bit of weather here in Oregon and I've been able to get around and do a lot of fun, amazing things uh, in my area today for, for business. And uh, yeah. It's been a good day. So hopefully you have had a great day where you are as well. And I tell you, you know what? Here on Rust Reels Live, we have amazing people. This is a topic-driven, panel-driven show. And I am blessed and honored to have some super amazing people on here with me. And I'm telling you, it is going to be a great, great show today. Um, I've got some amazing ladies that are here to talk about your clarity of your message. And we're going to get into that in just a minute. But first, wanted to let you know that I just love people and I love connecting. And I would love to connect with you today. So if you are not connected with me currently, I would love for you to do that. And the best way to do that is to go to RussHedge.com. That's right. RussHedge.com is the best place, one-stop shop for everything about me. And I would love for you to go there today and you can connect with me on social media. You can use my email, my phone number. You can even schedule time directly on my calendar. And I would love to Zoom with you today. That would be so, so amazing. Also, love to have you subscribe on YouTube today and make it real simple. You just go to rustreels.live. You can open up a separate tab right now. Go to rustreels.live and subscribe today. And what do you get? you get all this amazing content of my friends and that have just been a blessing to me and a value to me. And they come on here on Russ Reels Live. Also, there is the also marketing with Russ and uh, there are even episodes of the Experience Live with Russ and Scott. So you get a whole variety of of, uh, different shows there that you can find these amazing people that will add value to your life today. So please go to rustreels.live today. Subscribe. I would appreciate that so, so much. And if you happen to be watching this after the fact, you know, this stays on the platform. It broadcasts live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. After we're done, it sits there for infinity and beyond. That's right. You can continue to watch that. You can still share it with your friends. You can still tag your friends and let people know all about it. We'd appreciate that. If you're watching on replay, please put hashtag team replay today. I would really appreciate that. It'd be so, so amazing if you would do that. So also just want to remind you that if you haven't got your copy of Befuddled, Live the Life You Choose, you can pick that up at rushhedge.com or you can go to Amazon. Also, I want to tell you that I've got new books out, Rattled Awake Volume 1 and um, the uh, a Note to My Family. I am your legacy. Those are both out. If you can pick a copy of that up on rushhedge.com or Amazon as well, this month or the beginning of next month, my third collaborative book is coming out, Perspectives on Cancer, Volume 2, and just finished my chapter on my fourth collaborative book that will be out soon as well. So just having a great time writing and just adding value to people. So just wanted to let you know about that. All the information is at rushhedge.com. 
uh, today too. So you can get that there. So just want to let you know that. And I think with that, I want to get this party started. We're going to have a great, great topic today. And I'm going to start with my good friend, Nancy Backy. We're going to bring her in first because she is ready to roll. Here she comes. Hey, Nancy. You caught me. I caught you in the middle of a bite. Ah, My husband okay. is cooking an awesome meal and said, just taste. I said, I'm going live. He goes, just taste. I said, I'm going live. <laughs> Russ, always <laughs> awesome to hang out. How are you, my friend? I am so good. I am so good. And I'm so glad to have you here. Hey, listen, I am going to start with the very basics. Like, who is Nancy? I mean, for those people that don't know you, there can't be that many, but probably one or two. Give everybody a snapshot. Who's Nancy and what are you up to? So um, it's been an amazing last few years. I mean, I know you, Russ, for a few years, and it's been a, a great venture to know you. Who's Nancy? Nancy is a, um, I'm recognized as a business growth strategist. So for many years, I've been helping businesses grow using no cost strategies. Um, I'm at a place where my impact that I, and purpose of this, of what I do every day and where, you know, why Jesus is, has brought me here is uh, really to help the next to their next, um, it's the power of really changing somebody's life if they actually really want to, of course, and really connecting um, really great people. So business coaches, accountants, anyone that really helps a business uh, to their next, uh, we collaborate together and partner together and help the businesses to their next because they need so much help um, and they're totally lost. So yeah, that's, it's, it's my passion. Uh, I call myself, um, well, it's not myself. It's I was given the name actually, uh, change maker, difference maker. Uh, every person I touch, uh, every person I meet, doesn't matter who they are. It could be a kid, an adult, like whoever. You know, um, is just about making a difference. Like, what can I do to support you to your next, to your tomorrow, to your next hour? Um, yeah, that's me in a nutshell, Russ. And I've experienced that firsthand because you are such a blessing with my business and with being able to talk things through with me. And I appreciate you. And speaking of people I appreciate, was just on her live stream a couple of weeks ago, Kemi Hoy is amazing. And by the way, everybody, befuddled, live the life you choose. One of my endorsements when we just got to know each other, Miss Kemi Hoy is amazing. How are you doing, Kemi? I am fantastic today. How are you doing? Doing so good. I am so glad to have you on. And there's got to only be one or two people that don't know you. But for those one or two people, give give them a rundown. Who's Kemi Hoyza and what are you up to? Sure. So um, my name is Kemi Hoyza. I am the CEO of Zoetica Media, which is a um, social media marketing agency in Houston, Texas. I am also the founder of Social Media Breakfast of Houston. And I also am the founder of Smart Social Mastery, which is my online training and slash uh, membership course for expert PR and marketing um, coaches and consultants. And so I help coaches and consultants get seen and I help companies grow their online community and so that they can flourish and grow and so they can grow their business. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. And you do an amazing job. You do. And I, uh, I've i been able to watch that. And I haven't quite made it to a uh, Houston social media breakfast yet, but I'm going to get there someday soon. I know Scott's coming to visit you, so he's the lucky one. But uh, anyway, so great. And speaking of more amazing friends, somebody I haven't been able to talk to for a while, Gail, Ro Gail Robertson is here with us today. How's it going, Gail? It's going great and just love hearing uh, the other stories here of uh, the other guests. And of course, great to get to see you, Russ. And that is always a plus. This is how I, you know, I think, oh, I haven't talked to Gail for a while. I'll just have her on the live stream and then I get a <laughs> chat with her for a while. So. <laughs> so Gail, tell everybody, who is Gail Robertson? What are you up to? Okay. So, well, I am a recovering journalist and now chief curiosity officer with my uh, company, Gail Now. And basically uh, I help uh, those in manufacturing, but I also have helped others as well, both uh, tell and share their stories online and offline. 
And I'm the host of Curious Minds with Gail Now, which is over on YouTube, where I interview people uh, centered around the issue of curiosity and especially stories that uh, maybe we're not hearing about or we need to know more information. And so right now you see my background, my sign here. So the uh, I still go with the sign up, suit up and show up, which is really the foundation of what we're going to be talking about tonight around clarity and messaging. And because of my background in media and journalism, that's exactly what I specialize in is helping people take their message and get it so that people can understand it and know, um, uh, you know, to help people convey that. Because a lot of people struggle with the topic we're going to be talking about tonight. So that's, uh, that's what I do. I specialize in helping with clarity and messaging. Well, that is so good. And you know what? I'm going to stay here with you as we dive into this topic first and just say, I think so many people uh, have struggled with clarity and really getting a good, clear so message. I mean, the worst thing you want to hear, and I have heard this. So what exactly do you do? I mean, I know you're a I know you're inspiring and you do great things, they'll say to me. And I know that you're, but what exactly do you do? And I'm like, okay, I definitely have to work on my clarity. So, Gail, tell everybody when you have that issue with, you know, everybody knows you're a great person, but not really clear in what you do. How do you approach that? Well, you know, often it's showing, not telling. And one of the things when I'm sitting down with clients that I work with them on is that you know, you first have to know where you're going to go, where your end place will be before you sit down to start your content or we're deciding what platforms you want to use. So clarity is really about first deciding, you know, and it sounds so simple, but, you know, what is your goal? And a lot of people have a goal, but then they don't set out the objective. So they have a goal. They go, well, I want to bring in more business. I want to be busier. Well, OK, that's a goal to have. But then you have to start. Well, what is the the starting to break that down and be more specific so you know you may want to specialize in a very special in a, a specific area so for example i have uh specialized in manufacturing but i have clients outside manufacturing and in fact i sat down with someone recently a new client and one of the things they said to me right up out of the gate was that oh well you're like the manufacturing you know guru s and uh now they they have a technology aspect. So that fits in. And what's interesting, this all came from my messaging on LinkedIn. That's where they saw the work that I was doing. And, you know, this is where it's so important. I'm sure the other guests here will talk about that too. You know, the idea of really having that, you know, niche, having that specialty. And then people think, well, if I have that specialty, I can't do anything else. That's not true. Believe me, decide on your, that goal, go for it. And, once you know that, it's much easier to get clarity. And I know, Cammie, I, I'm excited to hear from her because I look to her as someone that has really managed to rock that world in terms of, uh, you know, uh, deciding on messaging. I first met her on uh, Twitter, now X. But um, yeah, so I think first you have to spend time just really looking at your business and your business goals before you jump into uh, deciding on your messaging. And that's people, most people skip over that step. Yeah. And you know, Cammie, I'm going to go to you next and I want you to answer that, but I also want to just add in a little note. And that is, I find that so many people don't even know really their true purpose or why they're even doing what they're doing. And they're struggling with their messaging because it starts with that. So Cammie, take it away. Yeah, I, I think what Gail said is so important. Um, I agree with her 100 percent on that. Um, I, I have I have this little uh, pathway to mastery that I've created. So many years ago, people asked me, "How do you do this?" Well, I'm a multi passionate entrepreneur. You could hear that at the beginning. You know, I'm doing like three different things. So how do you bring all of these things together into one? Well, I love what Gail said because I start with um, well, first of all, you have to have a vision, and the vision isn't just how much money you want to make. The vision is how you want to make an impact in the world, in my opinion, because if you have something bigger than yourself that you're aiming for, you're much more likely to get there. And by the way, you're much more likely to engage other people and bring them in to what you're doing because of that. So that particular thing is really important. So that vision is huge because you want the vision to be big enough for everyone to come into your vision. So for that reason, you want to spend some time on that. 
That being said, again, I have an agency where I help mid-sized to large businesses and I'm helping entrepreneurs and coaches and consultants. That is like the, the biggest possible gulf between the two, right? But in the funny part, it's not because my clients happen to be at the big companies. They're usually um, directors of communication, VPs of communication or marketing. And guess what those people sometimes do? They leave their jobs and they start their own business. It happens all the time. Or they get laid off or they get in a riff or whatever it happens, right? So um, these people are still the same people with a lot of the same motivations. So I'm talking to the same audience and I just continue to talk to that audience. And then guess what? They realize, um, they hear something in what I'm saying that, that draws them in. Well, I mean, I think it's the same with, I've seen, I've heard that with Nancy. I've heard that with um, Gail too. Um, I mean, I'm not doing manufacturing right now, but I am always drawn to her because guess where I started my career? I was the director of communications for the manufactured housing Institute. So do you see what I'm saying? It's just, you, if you tell people where you're coming from, they can, they can find something that they can connect with. Mm -hmm. Even if, you know, she's not like, I'm not in that world anymore. I get where she's coming from and I'm always wondering what Gail is doing because of it. So anyway, yeah. just throw that in. <laughs> well, I think, I think doesn't everybody wonder what Gail's doing all the time? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I get asked that a lot. Like, <laughs> Well, Hey, you know, I think that another person uh, in our group here, Nancy, has got a real knack for uh, this whole messaging and clarity issue. And she and I have talked about that. Nancy, take it away. Yeah, thanks. I actually messaged, I, I wrote it earlier, like, what's the heartbeat of your mission? Like, you know, Cammy said it. It's like, and Gail a little bit, like, yeah, Gail started with it. Like, yeah. How can you go somewhere and not even know what is the impact that you're doing? What's this problem that you're solving? Uh, and all that. And where is that heartbeat of the mission? Like, what are we, what are we doing? What, why are we doing what we're doing every day for? Why do we wake up in the morning other than, you know, your faith, uh, your family and business? Like why? Other than making money, right? You have to have fun with it. Um, so it has to come from that place of passion. You know, it it's not just a message you're going to just write down and take five minutes before you walk into your networking group. It's, you don't want to just reach people you want to really touch them, right? And what is that going to do? Like, how are you going to do that? You have to find out what their pain is, right? Um, so when they when they really feel your message, it doesn't feel like a sale. It doesn't feel like a transaction. It's like, let's find out if I can help you, if I can support you. Um, and also that message is not going to kind of get lost in translation, right? Because sometimes, like, I don't know about you guys, but I love to network. And I know you guys too, because that's how I met you guys. You know, uh, we go and everybody's like, yeah, I am a lawyer. If you have legal needs, call me. You know, it's like no differentiation, uh, no clarity. And I think it's the no clarity for them as well. Not I think, I know. It's no clarity for them, right? Um, and it's not their fault. They're just not taught how to do it. So then they got people like us uh, that, you know, um, help them. But yeah, I mean, I could keep on talking about this and talking about this, but number one, it's, you have to find out what are these people wanting to hear uh, from your authentic self that will actually resonate with that audience and remind them why you're doing what rewards you every day. Yeah, you know what I love about that too? And you said this, you know, really when it comes from your authentic self, from your heart, and you're really speaking to people in a way that it does grab a hold of them, as opposed to, we use this word a lot now, transactional. When you're transactional in your message and you're coming apart, like this is just what I want to get out of it. And so I'm putting out this message and they feel that. Um, I think that it obviously does not resonate with most people in that kind of a situation. And I think, um, you know, Gail, I'm going to come back to you. And that is, I think that so often it can be a simple little adjustment in words because words mean things and how we say things, we can actually be saying something that's a wrong along the right lines, but just saying it wrong. And so it's not hitting home. Right. Yes. That I have two things I want to say on that. One is the issue of, uh, you know, knowing your audience. So again, if you're going to start on any messaging, you have to know who your audience, who you're talking to, because, mm -hmm. you know, and I, we often hear this. Someone will say, you know, who, who is your target? Everyone. 
if, if that is, please reach out and get some help. If, if you say that you think your audience is everyone, it is not everyone. And, you know, I say that it's like one size fits all. No, it does not. Right. So we, we know that. The other thing when you're talking about the importance of words and power of words, uh, I'll touch upon AI because I've had people say to me, you know, my because of my background in media and writing and I help people with messaging. Well, you know, they'll say, you know, well, what about AI and using AI? Yes, you can use it as a tool. But I'll tell you right now, and I'm sure I see the other people nodding. Some people think they can just, you know, copy and paste. Uh, one thing, it sounds, sometimes it just sounds off. It's not talking about authenticity, that it is not. Now, you can still use it for research. You can use it to, a, you know, I sometimes, you know, for headings, it gives me ideas for breaking down content. But um, I would just encourage people to really be cautious about that because, and I'm not an anti-AI person. I think it has potential. You just have to know how to use it. Uh, the other example I give is, you know, we can have Canva as a tool, but I still go to a designer or the person who knows how to design. I would, I don't try to uh, uh, use Canva or those tools uh, without getting some help from, uh, from the experts. So yeah, verbiage, wording, it's so crucial. And the right, you know, Words and the power of words can be emotional. Look at great writers. And, you know, when you watch a movie, you know when there's a good script there. Uh, and someone spent a lot of time editing and editing again, writing, edit, edit, edit. And that's when you'll get um, the strength in your messaging as well. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times comes that's through... Great. You know, when we just recently, uh, Cami, you know, I've been doing these collaborative books, coming together and working with people and supporting each other, as you know, because you've done one, um, they are, it's kind of amazing because you get all these perspectives and all this stuff that you don't have. And I think that is true of our messaging and wording when we work with people like yourselves that are really gifted in this area, it brings a lot of things out that you just didn't think about. I always thought I was a good writer and yet I become so much better when I have other people that are working with me. So Cami, I, I have a story about that actually. So um, the, speaking of the book, I'm going to tell us, uh, I'm going to tell a story about my, uh, tell a story on myself. Is that okay? So, um, Go for here's it. The so here's the book. So um, I wrote this book with 36 other authors. It's um, published by Mark Schaefer, who is like one of the most well-known marketing authors out there. Um, Ever, anywhere. Anyway, so um, I took the social media strategy chapter and I was like, I, I got this. I mean, I do social media strategy like in my sleep. I do it every day. So I went and I wrote it and I was really happy. I sent him my, my copy. And a couple of days later, I got an email back and he said, hey, you can do better than this. Like I can Google all this information. This information is like, you know, old, like, I mean, yes, I realize you were around for the, the founding of this information and you probably even came up with this information, but it's out there and it's everywhere and everybody knows this. And I'm like, oh, and so he told me to go back to the drawing board, people. <laughs> I had to go all the way back to the drawing board to write the chapter. And then guess what? I lost um, confidence in myself. You know, it was like this feeling of, oh my gosh, well, I don't know what, well, what am I going to write? And so I rethought the whole thing and I rewrote the chapter and, you know, he accepted it and it was all fine, but I'm just saying it was really, really tough. And so one of the things I think is really important, and I have this right here, I'm lucky I have this right here right now because I put on my lipstick before our job is to hold up the mirror to our clients so that they can see what they can't see. Do you know what I'm saying? We need to be able to um, help our clients and our and our customers to see what they can't see. We don't want to sell them anything. We want them to. We want to show them a reflection of who they are, and that's messaging, right. by the way. Using mm -hmm. the words of your customer and the words of your clients to engage with them—that's messaging. So you don't want to be out there telling your story and your message. You tell your story as it relates to their who they are. So you want people to see themselves in your stories, not, right. uh, you know, that. And so one of the things I say all the time is, you know, we all have weaknesses on this front and we need other people to shore us up in these. So, you know, I'm a social media and marketing person. And sometimes, you know, I haven't done my social media and marketing all that well. And that's really where I engage with my clients too. I'm like, you know, yeah, you may know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, 
but I'm here to help you make sure that you get to the next step. So, and that is by holding up this mirror for you. So you can see who you are, mm -hmm. see how great you are, how amazing you are. <laughs> well, you know, that's, I think, um, it's, it's a matter of you want, like you said, stories are so powerful mm -hmm. and you want them to be the hero of your story. You want to lift them up and show them they can accomplish great things through what you're telling. And it's not all about you. You're not the, you're not the star or you hear a lot of crickets. You know, if you're so busy lauding your, you know, patting yourself on the back all the time. And Nancy, I think that, um, you know, it's important. It's important in that messaging to really tap into how you can help and encourage other people through this process, right? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I just wrote, uh, you know, think of your message as a lighthouse. It's not just about being seen. It's about guiding the right people home. You know, it's not, it's not about you. It's about the other person. About who you could help you know gail said it it's your avatar or your target market it's not everybody and it's not just women and men between the age of 30 and 50. you know you gotta go deeper so deep that like you're like oh wow i know them more than myself sometimes like demographic psychographics what do they like what do they not like what do they do every day you know where, where there's so much uh that needs to be done um and also when you create your message that way that really guides the right person to you then it's are you guys even a good fit are they ready to do the work are you you know are are and do they like what how you do things how you work together things like that but it has to be a you have to give it that weight and that warmth that it deserves and that they want to see and they want to feel they crave for it right they're you know back to that word uh, that you kept on saying earlier um they're transactional it's a word that i use all the time it's because what it's all we see every day like every phone call every email every like i'm not even on social media as much as i was before you guys will notice in the last year like i don't comment as it's not because it's just because it's just so much you know, I need to get in like, you know, like you guys, like you three commenting on things like, the, you know, like great conversations. Yeah, that's one thing I need to like put in my calendar to do it. But mm -hmm. it's just there's so much things and so much noise. Like that's another like we need to find a way to help these people who want help to cut through that noise because there's so much everywhere. You just got to I tell the coaches and consultants and, you know, who we work with, the accountants and real estates and real estate brokers, the. Uh, CFOs that we work with every day that we're support every day. It's like, guys, open the front door, open the backyard door. They're literally sitting there. I call it, they're sitting there crying. They just don't know what they're crying about because they don't know what to do. So if you put that message out from your heart, and it's true, like I, I Cami and Gail, I mean, you guys know, I see your little, it, it, they love what they do. You know, they're so good at it. They just don't know how to do some of the, the regular things because they never were taught. So when we come back to clarifying our message, it's like, what do you want? Are you just here to make money? I'll say, go get a job, mm. right? Because doing yeah. business, like it's not that. But now, now once you've you've clarified what you want to do, now it's like, okay. Once you put yeah. that plan and all that, then now it's just a matter of bring that voice out with warmth, with that authenticity, with that clear message that they're like, do you remember that man or that woman that said about that with your name? You know, they made a difference when I heard that. You know, I think it's so important what you said about the noise. And by the way, shameless plug, in my book, one of my chapters, Fighting Through the Noise, because there's so much noise in life. And um, there is so many people, as I say, shooting all over us, telling us what we should do. And there's media telling us what we should do. And there's family and friends. And, and then there's so many experts you know that I've, and you get lost in your own message just because of all the noise and gail i think that that's something that people need to find a way to create that space and that quiet to be able to think through what they're actually doing take the advice of good people yes but also have time to actually think it through on your own which leads into you got to get curious and you know i'm going to drop a ted lassoism because this is something i actually have his photo here i look at him and i've got the saying over here be curious not judgmental 
Uh, when we're curious, that's the other thing that when I'm working with clients as well, and even in my own world, is that sometimes we can jump to conclusions and jump, you know, we, 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 we make these judgments. And, you know, when you are developing your messaging, it's really important that you do get curious and you, um, you also need to look at, you know, I liked what the other guests were saying too about, you know, what is it that you enjoy doing? And, and again, if I'm working with someone is that what is, goes back to that goal? What is it they want to do? And if you're only looking to make money, you know, that's always, that's can be a difficult road because it may not be a very positive journey, but if you're doing something that fulfills you, that energizes you, uh, I've seen this time and time again, those businesses and people tend to be successful on a broader scale because they're, they're doing those things they love. Now, wearing my other more strategic hat, if I was working with someone looking at, okay, how can they get their message out, avoid the noise? This is where data comes in. And I'm a, I mean, I know Cami is also probably can speak to this, but you know, looking at your analytics and now when I say that, it doesn't mean like, oh, you know, do you want to get all these impressions? So you want to look at engagement. I always look at, because I know posts I could do to get lots of impressions. People would all look at it, but I look at the percentage of impressions and engagement. And, you know, one of the things that helps again is good content, getting people, like if I'm working manufacturing, getting some shop floor people. I just did a post, you know, including one of the workers working on a tool and the post was pretty simple, but you have to get close up, you know, get the picture of the person. And those are the things that pe people want to know what's happening behind the scenes. They, they don't only want to see necessarily just the, uh, you know, the, the CEO or president or the, the, the main per they, main person, they may want to see some of the other people as well. So um, the posts that do well tend to be ones that show, you know, uh, more people and also have more of those voices involved. So that now, how did I discover this is that I look at the analytics when I'm posting and I, so I tell clients now I need, if I'm not there, get photos, get close up, you know, taking a photo from way, way back of a box of heads doesn't work either. So, um, and I use tools like Otter. So I, when I'm on the shop floor or I'm getting some information, I want to make sure I get the exact information. So I'll use Otter so I don't have to always be taking notes as well. So there's lots of tools out there that can help you with your messaging as well. Oh, tools. Oh, Otter. I love Otter. <laughs> Otter.ai. Like, Otter it is for anybody that wants the simplest thing. I tell all my clients, even I said, here, use Otter if you don't want it. Because people that don't want to necessarily sit down and write something, they can talk into their phone. And then, and then just, I said, just give me that content. I can, that's like the, hunk of clay and then i'll take it from there no, well you know it's interesting because somebody just said the word simple i think a lot of times in our messaging we get too complicated right cammy we tend to we just get all caught up in fancy words and what we think we should sound like right i mean mm. it was it's like I usually wear hoodies on my in my uh, live streams because I'm a hoodie guy. I just want to <laughs> figure I'm going to be an authentic guy. This is how I hang out, right? But I think a lot of times we're uh, with our words, we tend to think we have to sound like somebody else, right? Yeah, I mean, so I first of all, I just want to say, Russ, that's one of the things I really admire about you is that you are just so authentic to who you are, and um, you've been through a lot over the last couple of years, but I think when you go through things like that, it also reduces it down to like what really matters. Right. And, um, we were having a talk the other day, but I actually just did a live stream today. It was basically do less to do more. So mm. if you like click on my little head, you can go watch it. It's only like 11 minutes long. I made it really short too. So it's like do less to do more. And it's really something that I'm really leaning into this year. So we are putting together for our content, just a, what I call a flywheel of content. So I'll do my live stream. And then we take that live stream and it spins out into a blog post, um, social media posts. All of the things are around that one topic, because here's the thing, you can't get through the noise. Like, why would I go through all the trouble to create a, a brilliant piece of content to get it out there, to get it to you, and then just move on to the next thing? You know, um, we don't really take advantage of what we have. Like it's a gold, like the stuff that we already have is gold. I was talking to one of my students today in um, smart social mastery. And she goes, Cammy, I was trying to put together my lead magnet and I was going through my stuff and I realized 
I have the entire lead magnet made. I made it like three years ago and it's still perfectly beautiful and fine. And I went and I looked at it. I gave it, I sent it over to my graphic designer. He dropped it into a PDF and I have the whole lead magnet. It's, it's up. She was like last week, she was worried, worried about how much time it was going to take and could she get it done? Guess what? It was already made. And here's the thing. You guys don't even know what you have just sitting in your hard drive. <laughs> um, I, so that's one place I ask people to go first is go look at the, the your archives and see what you already have. And maybe you have to remake it because it's a little bit old or whatever. But guess what? People want to know what you have to say. And um, those stories are really great. So I, I feel like, you know, telling people that you found something like in the bottom of your your hard drive is something that I think people would be really, find really interesting, like if you talk to them about it. So anyway, that's that's what I'm saying. So I agree with you, Russ. Simplicity is really important. I talked about it today in my own live stream because I'm finding that this is super important, especially now with AI. We were talking about that. And I am doing a lot of AI workflows right now. I could talk about AI all day, all night. I have clients. I just did a huge project that somebody paid me a lot of money to figure out how to do um, an AI workflow on social me media listening and taking all of the social media listening and turning it into um, insights. But there's just so much you can do with that. But you know what I can't do with AI? I can't find out what your story is. I can't tell your story. I can't tell my story. I can only tell my story by looking at you and having a conversation with these beautiful people that are here today. <laughs> that is exactly it. You know, sometimes old school is really the best school when it comes to things, you know, and I, uh, getting out and, uh, doing some networking with people today was amazing. And being able to, um, you know, sometimes just talking face to face with people and sharing your story with them in a one on one conversation is the best way to get the message out there of who you are. But I really love and uh, Nancy, I want you to grab onto this. And that is I love what you were talking about and what you've already. It's about all about like repurposing content, but it's stuff you've had. I have found stuff like that, Cami. I have been writing a book and thought back to something I wrote a long time ago and gone and grabbed a chunk of it, stuck it down in the book and wrote around it and then rewrote it, you know, but it, it gives you inspiration. I've already done this, you know, topic or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I think that sometimes people forget what we've already got, but Nancy, go ahead. You touched the topic of authenticity and people connect with people, you know, as, as people and business owners, we need to re remind people as well that we're not connecting with business owners. We're connecting with people, the regular people like me and you that have that same or had, have whatever, same head trash, same worries, fears. I don't know, whatever else that goes on that, you know, people sit with that, you know, um, yes, yeah, so, sorry, Russ, I went off somewhere. What did you want me to specifically talk about? <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but you know what? You just reminded me of something because sometimes we get stuck in, in stale in what we're doing, even yeah. though, you know, we might be being authentic and being ourselves, but we're kind of stuck and that's where the message isn't really hitting home. And um, sometimes that's in visuals. And I went to my, I just was looking at my stuff the other day thinking I need a few new pictures. And I went to my uh, personal branding photographer that I work with and she says, and you guys might know her because it's Miriam Haugen, who's on part of the global tea break. Yeah. Um, yeah. Miriam says to me, Hey, I was just about to call you thinking you need some new pictures. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it's just doing a little something new that kind of adds life to everything that you're doing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I'm going to bring it back to the messaging. Are we okay? Cause Go that's like the whole topic, but yep. exactly like what you just said. That photographer that you met that you you and again just creating a story you might have met her a year ago and not met her it's all about relationship building right that's mm -hmm. why we go network we're not going out to sell right but when your message is grounded in who you truly are first as long as it resonates with you it's going to resonate deeper with the people that don't know you right um and it's really about building trust and trust is that foundation of anything of any meaningful rela relationship and then if that works and you guys can help each other with whatever way that you could support each other, then yes, then we can help transform each other. And transformation only really happens when somebody, you know, when somebody decides that they're going to do it. And when you found somebody, then it just makes that shift change 
much easier. So I know I kind of went in a few little topics, but it all works together for the good. Um, and I, I know you guys might think it's crazy, but it's like, it's like you're watching a plant reach for sunlight, right? Once they reach for sunlight, they're growing, they're connecting, they're having an impact and there's the leaves growing and there's more leaves and right. And that's where all the magic of authenticity, I believe happens. It's, uh, just be real, just be you. Um, again, like we all been saying, don't think it's going to take you five minutes to write that message. Cause it's not, you know, take the time to write it. If you don't understand, Hey, you got a whole bunch of us over here. You can connect with Call us. <laughs> yeah, That's for get sure. in touch with us and, uh, you know, just make sure that it's, it's a genuine conversation between you yeah. and this total stranger. And it's about you finding that unique voice that you have to make you shine in them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Gail, we're going to, we're going to go back to you and we're going to do our last round. I want you to really kind of wrap things up with what your thoughts, give everybody your gold nugget of today's conversation and let everybody know how they get in touch with you. And we will let you take it away. Go for it. Well, taking from what Nancy said, I wanted to say, you know, it is about sometimes reaching out and getting help and asking someone else. Sometimes we don't see our strengths, just like when I work with clients, they sometimes can't see what their strengths are, or how they need to promote themselves. So that's where it does help to go get extra help on that. And just, you know, an aside, how I became the chief curiosity officer, I was at a heroic public speaking and training. It was like a lengthy course I took. And it was other people that said, they started talking about my curiosity and I was the most curious person. And I was looking at them and I go, what, what are they talking about? So I didn't think it was that unusual, but I have come to learn that people now say that I'm the most curious person they know. So, <laughs> but sometimes we don't see that. So yeah, I just tell everybody, I would say, if you take anything from tonight, please get curious and then you know, do your research, ask questions, reach out and get some help with your strategy. Because if you go to build a house on a shaky foundation, it's not going to do very well. So build up that foundation. And even if you just get help to get started and figure out where to go next, uh, that would be uh, my number one tip would be to make sure you, you start there. And for anyone who wants to reach out to me, you can find me pretty much everywhere on, um, as Gail now, uh, I am on Twitter. Uh, that's one, one part of who Gail now is. Another part of me is on LinkedIn under Gail Robertson. And then I have curious minds with Gail now on YouTube. So if you just search on YouTube for curious minds with Gail now, you'll see quite a range of, uh, stories and, and interviews that I do, uh, that, um, uh, yeah, definitely are uh, around the issues of curiosity and why we need to get more curiosity as individuals and as a society. You know, I am huge on foundation and what you just said, you know, building your house on a shaky foundation, you know, building your business, your life on that, it just doesn't work. And I think that people need to really think about what they can really do. When I added on to my house, I did what I could do. I am a, I'm a networker and a connector and a community builder. So I got the people. I became the general. I didn't know what I was doing, but I became the general. And what did I do? I just called friends and people that knew what they were doing to come and help me do it or to pay them to do it. One or the other so that I could get it done. And believe it or not, it all came together with a gigantic group of help and people, some teaching me how to do it, some of them just doing it. Sometimes we had parties. We took my whole old roof off uh, and I got a whole crew and we put a new roof on and just did things because there were people that could help that knew what they were doing. And it started with the foundation, by the way, which a great neighbor who is in construction and did foundations help me with. Nice. Um, those kind of <laughs> things. And it's that. It is. And it's that thing about everything we do, right, Nancy? I'll let you go next. It's building it from the ground up through getting with people. And that's how we build a message. We build a strong message by having that strong foundation. Go ahead, Nancy. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's not really changing about who you are. It's really about relieving the best part of you to the world, right? Um, and I know we're all on the same page on this, but, you know, don't forget to embrace that beauty that you have, right, of just being you. You know, I, whenever I talk to people, 
Um, I don't really care who they are. I just tell them I'm going to be me. I hope you're okay with that. Uh, Cause I'm like, I'd rather just be me, be authentic guys. People are only going to really want to get to know you. Forget about buying. You're not even there yet. They just want to get to know you first. Um, and then you go from there. So, uh, keep in mind, if you look at it, it in a sea of voices, the one that speaks the truth is the one that's going to be actually heard and remembered. So if you're going to lie, or if you're going to feel like you're transactional, they are just going to gear away from you. If you want to help people, then what are you going to do about being authentic and letting them hear the true you and how you could really help them uh, with the challenge and the problem? So guys, uh, Nancy Backy, I'm everywhere, yes, but please do not message me everywhere. Um, you want to see what I do? Google me. Uh, you'll find everything. Uh, but if you want to message me, LinkedIn is the best place. Within 48 hours, I will respond, I promise. Uh, and I personally respond myself. Uh, I have a teams and everything, but that's one thing that I do. So please, let's do it. Uh, let me know what you do. Would love to get to know you. Um, and again, I'm all about authenticity. So please, if you're not authentic, do not connect. But if you want to become authentic and you don't know how, it would be such a pleasure because I think you will be a great impact to the world with whatever you do. Amen. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well said. Well said. All right. All right. Well, Cami, bring us home. Give us your Absolutely. Yeah, wisdom. I think I'm going to be connecting with Nancy. I'm kidding. I, I've always <laughs> <connected with> <laughs> I she love like you, Tammy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm leaving a message for Nancy in her LinkedIn page. Okay. So um, cute. That's what it was. So um, here's the thing, guys, um, what Nancy just said, but here's the thing. You're going to attract some people and you're going to turn some people away. So there, you need to have a point of view. I don't mean to go out and be political. Okay, please. This year, like we have plenty on, the, on, there's plenty of people, unless you are that person, unless you're the political person and that's your whole thing, go for it. But if you are like, just, you know, trying to do your work, that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, you just have to have a, a distinct point of view to stand out right now. It's super important right now that you have a distinct point of view. That's why you have to have a brand voice. You have to have a message. You have to have all of these things. Um, today In today's live stream, I put a link to my free um, workshop that's coming up on brand messaging if you want to go to that. But you need to have a brand message. You need to have something that's unique to you. And that mm -hmm. is sometimes you're going to need somebody else to help you with that. It's just really hard. I don't know about you, but it's really hard for me to write about myself, talk about myself, it's so much easier for me to come to you and like talk about you and, you know, put your, your, your story together. Um, back in 2006, I've been doing, uh, I, I became a blogger in 2005, back in 2006 time magazine, the, with the person of the year, I don't know if you remember, this was you. And they had a mirror on the front of time magazine that year. It was a mirror. And they said, the person of the year is you. And so when you looked at time magazine, your face would show up there. And um, we kind of made fun of it at the time, but I really do feel like that's true because what we're doing as entrepreneurs, it's again, reflecting our clients. Like we're trying to get them to see themselves. So I love that. Remember that. And also community is the killer app. Community is the killer app. And that is what you want to do is be building community around your brand and around your products and around your services and just making friends. Okay. So let's just be realistic. Somebody once asked me why I started social media breakfast of Houston. I just moved to Houston. I didn't know anybody. I literally started to have friends. That's the truth. Um, and because of that, it's, we're going to celebrate 15 years of social media wow. breakfast in May. So Amazing. that community has become like, has taken on a life of its own because guess what? The community is at the heart of it. It's not me that's at the heart of that community. It's the community that's at the heart. And so as you grow your community, um, remember these are like, you, they may not be customers, but they're going to be referring people to you. They may not be exactly the right person for your job. That's why Nancy keeps saying, I'll talk to anybody. I'll talk to anybody because those people, whether you think they're relevant or not, don't ever look over people's shoulders to who's behind them. Mm -hmm. Look at the person who's in front of you and focus because guess what? That person can become a huge brand ambassador for you. Huge. Um, there was one of those that got me on the, um, good, good morning, America. Seriously. She's never been a client. 
She came to the social media breakfast some, but she remembered me and thought, oh, she can talk about that. And when she, when she was asked if she knew somebody who could do that, she recommended me. And then I was on there. So I'm just telling you, you never know who you're talking to. So again, Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Cami Heise. I have it on my, uh, when, when you, when we get on our little things, you can go to camiheise.com and um, they have everything up for you right now as Russ has there. But camiheise.com has links to everything, including my weekly live streams. I have a whole section that's all like organized on YouTube where you can go find these things. Um, I've been talking about so smart social tips, smart social media tips for a long time. So um, lots of stuff out there for how to grow your brand that you is just ready for you. It's just sitting there on YouTube right now that you could go watch right now to find out exactly how to do this. Or as uh, Miss Nancy said, send me a DM on LinkedIn. Super happy to connect with any of you. And um, I'm headed to uh, San Diego next week. So if any of you are in San Diego, San Diego, let me know. I'm going for uh, social media marketing world. So anyway, yeah, if you're going to that, let me know and I'll see you guys later. Oh, hey, you're in, oh, you're Houston. Oh yes, please. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know. See, I love that. And I just wow. add one more thing based on what Cami said, because this is really important when she said, don't try to please everyone too. That's a really key thing. You know, I always say, don't, don't try to please everyone. You're not chocolate. And you know, like just, you know, and not everybody will love you either. Like that's the other thing we have to come to realize that whatever we're doing, someone will complain about it. Someone doesn't like it. So really find your path and, Again, the most successful people tend to uh, do that really well. Well, I think that is so true. And it's because they engage wonderful ladies like yourselves who know what they're talking about. And I think that is what it all comes down to. And Cami mentioned again, community. And of course, you all know that I'm all about connection and community building. And like I gave the example of my house, people joke with me that I know everybody. And obviously I don't know everybody, but I have built such a big community that there's always resources, wisdom, and knowledge to pull from your community in a good way because you're friends, you come together. And that is how things get done is when people do it together. And that is the same, I think, with messaging. I have, you know, I, I love these shows because I learn stuff every time, you know. I just, all of you had so much value and wisdom today that I'm just going to have to follow up with all three of you about my messaging anyway. So I, uh, but I want to thank you for being here today. And I want to thank everybody for being with us for Rust Reels Live. We're here every Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you're listening to Viewing Pleasure, don't forget to uh, go to rustreels.live and subscribe to the YouTube page. Love to have you there today. And I'm just going to say goodbye with all of you on the screen. So first, we got to give our best screenshot forever to get a good picture of us. Are you ready? Here we go. There we go. All right, we're ready to go. Wave <laughs> goodbye, everybody. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>